Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Zach Kunkel, and I'm going to be your moderator for today's webinar. Hope you're having a great day thus far and wanted to introduce you to our discussion, Managing Events in School Districts, where we are super excited to unveil our latest solution, Event Manager. So before we hop in, just a couple of housekeeping items that I wanted to run through. Just FYI, all lines are muted, uh, and that is on purpose. Uh, if you do have any questions or want to utilize the chat feature, please use uh, the buttons at the bottom. They should say either chat or Q&A, and we do have some designated time at the end for the Q&A section. So also a recording of this webinar will be sent out a couple of days following this webinar. So to run through today's agenda, we're gonna have a welcome and introduction section where I introduce you to our speaker this afternoon. We're also gonna have an overview of the state of event management in K-12 districts, talk a little bit about due solutions, proficiency in event management, and then we're gonna introduce event manager, our latest solution, and have some time at the end for Q&A and closing. So I'm going to introduce you to Mike Brimmer, who's gonna be our presenter for the day. Mike is a senior solutions consultant for Dude Solutions, and he's now been at the Dude for around seven, six to seven years. Uh, Mike's primary responsibility is to create product presentations for speaking engagements and online seminars, and he hits on industry best practices to increase operations efficiency. Mike also, prior to Dude Solutions, worked for our public education with experience in athletics, community involvement, and safety. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Mike Bremer. Thank you so much, Zach. Really do appreciate everybody's time today. Uh, we know that it's a busy time of year, whether uh, you're recently coming back from spring break, perhaps some of you are taking time out of your spring break to join us today, or maybe spring break is coming up, um, but we really do appreciate everybody's time to join us. Let's jump right into this. Um, the state of, of event management in public K-12 districts often lend themselves to being community centers outside of school operating hours. I often hear from clients that your facilities are being used all the time. We understand there's a lot of moving parts and common challenges being faced regarding facility usage. These are the top five problems or challenges we hear about. Not having one master calendar that displays all events going on across a district. This could lead to facility coordinators having to look at multiple calendars to check if facilities are available. Not having that master calendar can also lead to conflicts such as issues with double bookings. Communication is something that we hear about all the time. And again, with the number of people involved and all the moving parts, the lack of clear and automated communication to make sure all stakeholders are aware of facility usage details. Community engagement, this speaks to the relationship between the district and students parents, the community organizations, as well as the faculty and staff. And then the fifth problem we hear about, we could really spend this entire presentation discussing cost recovery and the challenges around invoicing. If we're able to solve these five problems, that can lead to having a very strong facility usage policy in place that creates transparency across the district. So this brings us to our focus for today uh, with Event Manager. To talk a little bit about where we're coming from, the DUDE has been able to help school districts track events and facility usage for around 15 years now, making us the market leader and go-to for facility usage best practices that are data-driven. Last year alone, we were able to track and help school districts 
with 11 million events that were hosted. From our data, we've been able to generate valuable insight in the form of white papers. One of these resources came from a 10-year study we completed with 1,700 educational organizations that focused on cost recovery. Off of that study, a cost recovery calculator was created to help you and your district better understand the cost of events and the impact to the district. Um, these resources we're happy to share with you. We're looking at our full suite of solutions that we offer. We're gonna focus in on event manager, but we also understand that events can impact a lot of these other areas of maintenance and operations. To focus in on event manager, here's a snapshot of the functionality event manager provides, and I'm gonna be taking you through a demonstration of the life cycle of events. From the request, through approval, supporting the event with what we identify as task management, making sure there's no conflicts, being able to communicate out to all the stakeholders, including the requester. If it's an event that we're going to be recovering costs for, the invoicing process. And then we'll tie a nice bow around everything with community engagement and being able to have that one branded master calendar that creates transparency across the district so everybody knows what's going on. And there's some additional functionality there with the calendar, being able to promote events that the district is hosting, drive engagement. Maybe it's even an event that you're looking to have people sign up for or buy tickets for. So we will take you through that life cycle. Bear with me here for a second. And I'm going to share out my screen with you. So at this time, we're looking at the community portal. Now, if we step back here, Community organizations, before a contact for the organization would be able to submit a request, they would need to create a profile. And that profile, they're providing you their name, their contact information, and what organization they're with, as well as agreeing to your terms and conditions. On the district's end, you can approve that contact. If you approve them, they can start submitting requests but you also have the ability of denying them or declining them, therefore they wouldn't have access to submit requests. The community portal is, is a great opportunity to provide your external requesters with information that they need to make a good request. Now, if I'm a community organization, I may not know your facilities that well. So here in the top left-hand corner, we have the ability of pick, picking the perfect location that meets our needs. So maybe I'm looking for a, a football field, athletic field, a gym, a conference room, a classroom. I have the ability of defining that information as well as dates and times that I'm interested in using the facilities. And then if we go down here to the current search, I also have the ability of defining my search criteria by terms and usage as well as capacity. So maybe I'm looking for spaces that I can request that fit somewhere between 50 and 75 people. And then I'll narrow down my search of the spaces that you offer for a request. If we look at these different spaces, I'm gonna focus in on the cafeteria here. Let's go and view the details of this space. So we have the ability of including pictures of spaces. Here we'll notice we have multiple pictures of the cafeteria and then providing good descriptions of that space. Where is the space? How many people can this space hold? What type of space is it? What is this space typically used for? And then a nice little blurb, descriptive paragraph about that space. This really allows you and your district an opportunity of providing as much or as little information that you'd like to to these requesters so that they can make a good educated request. Now, if I'm interested in this space and it meets my needs, I'll go over here to the right-hand side and I'll be checking availability first before I fill out a request form. 
So let's go here to June and say I'm interested in using the cafeteria June 19th, and I'd like to use it from 3.30 to 4.30. On that time scale of checking availability, if this space was already being utilized on that date and time, it would be grayed out and it would simply say unavailable, going back to preventing any double bookings or conflicts from existing. What I also like to mention is we're placing more responsibility on the requester that they're checking to see if that space is available or not. You don't have to provide them a lot of information of why it's not un uh, unavailable or why it's not available. Um, if it is available, now we have the opportunity of continuing to create the event request. That's a little bit about the community portal itself. From here, I'm going to go over to the administrative side of the solution, and let's actually walk through the process of filling out a request form. I'm also going to go ahead and get rid of the browser here for a second. These request forms are customizable as well as configurable to meet your needs. A lot of districts are gonna have one request form for internal requesters and then a completely different request form for community requesters. So you can differentiate them, but they are customizable. Everything from the logo at the top to the name of the form itself is customizable. The only two required sections of the form are the event details, location, and time. Everything else from contact information down to billing address is optional whether it is part of the form or not. And if it is part of the form, is it required or not for the requester to fill out? So here I'm going to just go with my organization. So let's say I'm a community organization, Take Flight Athletics, and we would like to do our summer kickball league at one of your facilities. The summary, this is more of a full description of that event, especially if you're going to be having an internal event that the district is hosting, but it's an event that you do want to drive engagement and you want to promote out to the school community, you may want to put forth more of a marketing effort because this description can show up on the calendar that we'll look at towards the end of the presentation. You can even add your own HTML and design to this. Now let's get into what's probably the most important section of the form itself, and that's the location and time. So here, for most folks, we're going to know what space we'd like to use, especially if we're an internal requester. So here what we have is a, a modal that pops up, and then this allows us to start defining the space or spaces that we're interested in using. So maybe I'm interested in using space over at the high school and I want to use that cafeteria. We can continue to add additional spaces to this request. All we have to do is check those boxes, and the spaces that we define are picked here at the top. From here, just like we looked at on the community side of things, I'm going to check availability first. So let's say again, maybe June 5th, and we'd like to utilize this from 4.30 to 6 o'clock. If that time doesn't meet your needs, just simply click on the time scale, and we can put any time in here that we'd like to. Now, if this is going to be an event that is a series, it's going to happen more than one time. We can do a multi-day option here, and we get another pop-up. This allows us to define if it's going to be consecutive dates. So, okay, it's happening five times. Is it happening five times over the next five days, weeks, months, or years? And if it doesn't fit a specific pattern, we can do non-consecutive dates where we get access to a calendar and we can scroll through the calendar and pick and choose exactly when that event is going to happen. Now here we see the time of the event is 4.30 to 6 o'clock. But maybe we need some support and some setup and breakdown time to add to the event. So let's add 30 minutes before the event, and let's add another 30 minutes on the back end of the event. And this is going to be this is going to do two things for us. One, make sure there's no overlap with anybody else trying to utilize the space, so somebody can't submit a request for 4 to 4:30 to use the cafeteria, 
because we already have it reserved for the setup of this event. It also will help out when we talk about task management, those supporting the event itself. Now let's drop down here and start getting into some optional sections. Contact information, that may be the same, may be different from the requester. Categories and keywords, something that we see on calendars a lot today. These are customizable to meet your needs. Examples that we see, things like athletics, professional development, maybe it's a holiday. But you can also do main categories and subcategories, such as the arts that we see here, or community education, or athletics. Again, those are customizable to meet your needs. You can have main categories, subcategories. You can filter and search on the calendar by categories. And it's also an opportunity for the approval process. We can route requests based on the actual category itself. Additional information, this section here is customizable to meet your needs. You can have these questions required to be filled out. I'm gonna skip over tasks here shortly because I wanna spend some time discussing that in more detail, so we'll come back. Sale items. This is an opportunity, just like it's called, is to sell items, whether that's tickets to an event, think of a performing arts or a football game on a Friday night, a fundraising event. It also allows you to set up registration for an event. You have an event, you want people to sign up, register, RSVP, maybe you need volunteers to help out with the event. Whether there's a cost or it's free, and then whatever information you need to capture from those who are signing up or buying something, here we have some available questions. You can make them required. And then you can also add your own custom questions. Pictures and attachments, that's pretty self-explanatory there. And then insurance information and billing address. Probably something that you are tracking, want to track when it comes to community organizations utilizing your facility. So here I can just say, use my organization's insurance information. I've already provided you that info. So here it populates there with the coverage amount and date. And if I need to, I can also attach a copy of my liability insurance. And then we have the billing information here as well which is handy if we're going to be invoicing this organization. Now, as far as the approval process, once I submit this request, the requester is gonna receive a notification that their request has been submitted and it's going to be reviewed and we'll notify them based on the status of their request. Those on the district end that are involved in the request process or approval process, you'll also receive a notification. And then we can come into our home screen dashboard and we have a dashboard that shows us all the events that are pending approval, which allows me to, one, click on the event and get into all the detail, and I could review it, I can edit, I can approve, I can decline. If you do decline, you can put in reason why that event is being declined. You also would have a similar view on an event-specific dashboard that allows me to filter and search by categories and locations, or maybe I just wanna see what's still pending. And so I see these three events that are still pending, who submitted the request, what the status of the request is, and where were they submitting the request for. Now, as far as supporting these events, we have what's called task management. Task management is customizable to meet your needs. And what I mean by that, we'll go through an example here. We have the ability of adding a task and so the task name, something like food services or maintenance, custodial, uh, AV, IT, safety, security, put in the description of that task, what type of task is it, which is customizable to meet your needs, the priority of that task. And then from here, I'm actually going to go into one that's been created. So let's go into this first one. So we have the name of the task is AV, we need to set up for a web conference, the type of task is web conference, and here you see that we've associated it to an event, and we've gone ahead and assigned it to Michael Bremer. So what would happen here is once we assign them the task and we approve this event, 
they'll receive a notification. But this event may not be for three months down the road. So we have the ability of also setting up an automated reminder to send to Michael one day before the event. We can also add attachments to go along with our task. From here, we have the ability of filtering through our task. So maybe I want to send just the IT department tasks that are associated to them for maybe all the events that are taking place next week. That's one way to, in one example of searching, filtering, and then you can export these tasks out to a PDF file and email over to them if that's necessary. From here, let's talk about invoicing. So here we'll see a list of invoices that we've already created. I build the foundation for my invoices in the settings. Let's go ahead and create a new invoice. Your invoices can have your logo and address on here. First, we want to decide on when do we want to issue out this invoice. So let's just say that we want to issue it out now. But then it's due, let's say net 30. So it's due on May 18th. We have the ability of invoicing organizations or individual users. And then I'll just go ahead and start typing out the organization that I'm going to create the invoice for. And when I do that, notice how it populates that name there for me. That's a member of Take Flight, and that's who we deem to be the treasurer of that organization that's going to receive the invoice. But we can also add additional recipients here. And then what event are we invoicing for? And these are all pre-filtered to just events for this specific organization. I can create an invoice for one event, or I can create invoices for multiple events at one time. Now we can start adding our sections and line items. So let's say they use the gym. So that's what we're going to call the section. And then we start populating line items. Things like, okay, there was a custodial service. And then let's add one more. Maybe there was a room rental fee. Underneath here, we can add fees, things like maybe an application fee, discounts, maybe we're waiving some fees because they're a nonprofit, taxes, can't get away from those. And then we have some messaging at the bottom. Here on the left-hand side of all of my invoices, I see the status of the invoice, scheduled, paid, issued, outstanding. Now, here we have a, one that's been issued. Maybe they came up to the district and they wrote a check. You can put the number in there. How much did they pay? Let's say they wrote a check, made a partial payment for this invoice. Let's say they paid $50. Go ahead and save that. We'll notice that now that invoice, the one at the top, number 67, is due on the 18th for $130, but they've paid 50, and now we have an outstanding balance of $80. And all of your invoices have an invoice history, so we can see who did what when. And then just like we saw on task management, you have the ability of filtering and searching and exporting reports for your invoices. Now from here, let's go ahead and wrap that bow around it with the calendar. This calendar can be used in a lot of different ways. Uh, this could be your district event calendar on your website. You can embed the calendar. You can also integrate with other calendars. We can talk more detail about that. But this calendar also does a great job of promoting events. Obviously, the events that you want to promote. So here we have names of events with descriptions, where the event is located, date and time. And maybe I'm a parent or a student looking at the calendar and I'm interested in this. I can email it to myself, set as a reminder. Maybe I want to get a text message or email reminder the day before the event or an hour before the event. Or maybe I want to add this one specific event to my own personal calendar, which also leads to the ability of searching and filtering through the calendar. So maybe I'm just interested in events that are going on at a certain location or that are related to a certain category and filter down that calendar. And then maybe I want to subscribe to all those events and pull them into my own personal calendar or receive notifications about those events. Pull my browser back up here. So again, we went through a snapshot of event manager from request through the approval, supporting the event, invoicing for the event, 
and then wrapping that all together with that calendar. From here, we're going to be pulling up a polling question so we know how to follow up uh, regarding next steps, whether you and your district would like to have a private presentation of event manager, or we can provide you some of the resources that we've talked about, such as the cost recovery white paper, cost recovery calculator, and other resources regarding event manager. We'll give you some time here to respond to that polling question. Zach, are they able to see that polling question now? They are. I'm already receiving responses. So yeah, if, just to reiterate what Mike said, if you would like a private demonstration or more information on event manager, please fill out the polling question and we'll leave that up for another 30 seconds or so. And Mike, we have been receiving some questions. So after we are done with this polling question, I will go ahead and start asking you those. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Zach. We'll give everybody a couple more seconds here to fill out the polling question. Again, just uh, let us know how you would like us to follow up with you in your district regarding event manager. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and end this poll. And then we will go ahead and jump into some of the Q&A. So Mike, I got a question in regards to, I know you were just talking about at the end, that event manager can integrate with other calendars. Can you talk a little bit more about that and what questions or what uh, calendars it can integrate with? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question. Um, so when we look at the top five challenges, one of those challenges uh, is multiple calendars at a district. And sometimes that's hard to get away from, but having one master calendar can be extremely beneficial. But if we need to work with other calendars, we have the ability of doing uh, import exports and setting up scripts and integrations with other calendars whether you're using Google calendars or Outlook calendars uh, or other calendars that are out there. And with, the, uh, with importing into Event Manager, we can do one-time imports or persistent imports. And then with exporting to other calendars, we have different file formats, whether it's iCal, which is pretty common, but we can do XML, RSS, or CSV formats as well. Awesome. So the next question I had come in was in regards to athletics. So the question is, our athletic department uses another calendaring system or another system to track athletics. Do you guys integrate with different athletic solutions? Yeah, another great question. I spent about six years in public education, specifically in athletics. And uh, as a former coach, the last thing that I want to do is enter my game schedules in my athletic scheduling program and then have to turn around and do double data entry into another program. So that's similar to the response uh, with other calendars. Uh, we can set up an integration to work with your athletic scheduling software and be able to pull in those schedules. Um, and we can do that on a regular basis. So we would be able to set up a persistent import so we can check back to the source to see if there's new any updates. like. Right now in the spring, we don't know if it's going to be raining, snowing, hopefully not anymore, uh, but you're probably rescheduling some games here or there. So we want to make sure to set up a persistent import to pull in those updates uh, on whatever time frame we need to. Good deal. So we've got more questions. We only have time for one more and just want to let everyone know that if your question didn't get answered, we will be handling those offline via email and we will definitely get those questions answered for you. But the last question I have for you, Mike, is uh, in relation to our surveys. So I know that you, you high level hit on that, but can you talk just a little bit more about the survey functionality, what you've seen clients or prospects potentially use that for? Uh, can you elaborate a little more about that? Yeah, perfect. And uh, thank you so much for asking that question because that was not a something that I highlighted when we were looking at um, the features and opportunities of Event Manager. Um, so thank you for pointing that out. Um, so the survey functionality, um, we've heard from a lot of districts that want to send out a survey to their clients. 
the community organization that came in and, and utilized or rented the facilities, um, and you may be using something like SurveyMonkey today to do that, well, we've gone ahead and created and developed our own survey tool that's completely customizable. Um, you can send out surveys to those who rented the facilities, um, you know, common questions. Did you receive all the support that you needed? Were the facilities clean when you came in? Were the restrooms stocked? Uh, any feedback you want to provide us? Would you re recommend the use of our facilities to others in the community? Um, if you're having an event where you set up registration, maybe you want to send out an automated survey to those who attended that event. Um, but it's also a survey tool that you can use for anything that's going on at the district that you want to gather feedback. Awesome. So with that, we are going to be out of time. Just want to thank everyone for hopping on on, like Mike said, a busy time of year for all school districts. Again, thanks everyone. If you do have any questions or any comments in regards to today's presentation or in regards to event manager, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks everyone.